the death ground. So uh, one of the common problems we often see on a Shopify site, particularly for those people who just started up a Shopify store, is they have a bit of a messy system. They've got collections that all have the same hierarchy. There's no real order to the site. The homepage is stuffed full of products. The site isn't really laid out like a shop. It's just kind of everything's on the homepage. And it's very hard for Google and probably your users to understand how to sort of navigate through the site, but also what is the correct structure? You know, what is the senior pages? What are your collections for your product types? Um, which ones of those are more important than other ones? And one of the simple ways of doing that and trying to create a bit of hierarchy, a bit of structure that perhaps Shopify sometimes misses out for SEO is to add product type breadcrumbs. And it's really easy to do, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So if you've got a debut theme, which so many people seem to have, I mean, bear in mind that theme was made when Barack Obama was president, Robin Williams was still alive, um, People still thought Bill Cosby was a nice old man. Um, so it's pretty dated and it does lack some of the basic requirements now for what is really a, a fully functioning, organic marketing driven website. And you know, SEO is a, is a good long term investment, brings you traffic when you don't have to run ads. So it's really important to get these things right. So first of all, what I want to talk to you about before I jump onto the screen, is explain to you what different pages should be targeting. So if you have a, a range of different products, perhaps branded products, all sorts of products, those products are not there to target you know, the term. So if you've got uh, a washing up liquid powder that you sell on your website, for example, let's just say um, it's called um, Acme Washing Powder Liquid, okay? Or Ac is that Washing Powder Liquid? Acme Washing Powder, okay? Um, you're not trying to SEO this for washing powder. That's not what a product is for. A product is to try and target the, the product itself, the specific product you know, brand. So it's Acme, it's Acme's washing powder or Acme Superwash. You know, that's what you're that's what you're SEO targeting that product for. Products are to target the product itself, not something like a product type. So a product type, you see in the back end when you add a product, you'll see product type and you'll see vendor. Vendor's stupid name from Shopify, it should be brand. Uh, so people end up putting their own website name into the vendor, which uh, renders a really useful feature that you can sort of hack on Shopify, uh, which I'll cover in another video with vendor labels. So just remember that one as well. Uh, what do you put in the vendor section? You put the brand, you don't put your company. I know you are the vendor. It's a stupid, stupid name and it's born about, uh, I don't know, some coders perhaps who haven't really thought about how retail sites run. So vendor is actually brand, so that's something I'm gonna cover in another video. And I'll, as, as I wanna make that video, I'll put the link in this description. But the first thing I wanna focus on is product type. So you've got Acme, you know, super powder or super whatever it's called, okay? Um, product type would be, you know, what that product type is. So it'd be washing powder, okay? But although you put that in the product type, that doesn't have any SEO value there. It's just for your organization and it helps you organize your collections. And it's the collections that are there to target product type. So what you want to be doing is under optimizing a product for a product type. And you want to be optimizing your collections for the product type and under optimizing that for the product. So when I say under optimizing, what do I really mean? Well, under optimizing essentially means don't stuff it full of the wrong pages, you know, the wrong keywords for that page. So a keyword obviously is a word that we all associate with SEO and things that people search for. So they're called keywords because they're, they're important words at the end of the day. Um, some pages we optimize for a term and some pages we have to under optimize for certain terms because what we don't want to do is we don't want to confuse Google as to what is our core page. If you've got five pages or five products that all have loads of stuff about washing powder in them, it's very hard for you to rank for washing powder essentially because you've got five pages that are all competing for that term. So what we would do is we would under optimize for the term washing powder, over optimize for what those brands, you know, the brand names and the product type, the product type, you know, the particular products on those products. And we optimize the collection that they all sit within for the product type. Perhaps I'm not making myself completely clear. So product types are what we optimize a collection for. So you'd have a collection of washing powders, okay? And it would be optimized for the term washing powder, but it wouldn't be optimized for Acme Superwash. You know, that's what the product is gonna be. And you might have five or six different or 20 or 30 or 50 different washing powders. And all of those, you should be under optimizing for the term washing powder, over optimizing for the specific brand, you know, the brand name and the brand model and if we do use the word washing powder, we want to link that to the collection because we want Google to know that the collection is targeting washing powder. 
So if someone's looking for a buy washing powder on, online, we don't want them to find one of our products. We want them to find the collection because when they get to the collection, because if they're searching for a product type, they probably want choice. They probably don't know what specific brand to be looking for and they want choice. And it's the job of the collection to make that job easier. So when they land on the collection, you've got nice filters, not just debut drop down boxes, which is one of the flaws of, of debut. It's not really set up for you know, broad scale e-commerce. I've never used it in my own business. But you know you can add features like that. You can add you know useful filters and things. You see on big retailers like Wayfair, who are very very SEO focused, they have amazing user experience when it comes to the filters. So if someone's searching for washing powder online, they perhaps don't know what kind of washing powder to go for, or they perhaps haven't made a decision yet. So you'd be wanting to rank the collection for that. They land on the collection and you give them a whole host of choice, a range of products, but also little filters down the left-hand side that might say you know, by price, uh, by you know, eco-credentials, by brand, uh, by, I don't know, speed or strength of wash, super whites, whatever it is. You know, that's what the collection job. So the collections for the product type. So when you add a product to your website, make sure that product type is what you're going to be focusing a collection on. So you under optimize your products for the product type, okay? So we don't confuse Google. If you couldn't pick out which one of your core, say you've got 20, 20 washing powders on your website and you haven't really done your collections properly yet because you haven't really thought about that and you've got, you know, they're all mentioning washing powder. If I asked you, what's your core page for washing powder? You probably would go, well, this one's probably does a bit better. Okay, that's not the answer. The answer is this page. You should know immediately what is your core page for every product type because they're your collections and they're the things that sit on the top of your bar. So when people go to their, set up their websites and we, they do what's called home page stuffing, which means throwing everything onto the home page, loads of products on there. It's just a mess. There's no order. There's no structure. What you want your consumer to be doing is if they land on your home page, they go, right, okay, washing powder collection, bang, go there. That's two pages they've viewed now. They haven't bounced off the home page. They found the core page quickly. And then once they're on the collection, it's your job to make sure their next step is easy. So you might have a bunch of um, some pictures on the top that might have uh, different brands, you know, I don't know, Acme, Acme 2, Acme 3, Acme 4, whatever the brands are. And they can quickly, quickly click to maybe a collection called collections forward slash Acme if you wanted to do that. Um, and or you'd have nice filters down the left-hand side. So you try and focus on, on having senior collections, generally product types, and you might have um, smaller sub-collections that you, although they're not necessarily, you know, they're not sub-collections as you might see on WordPress. You can't do um, washing powder forward slash Acme um, as easily on Shopify. You can do it, but not as easily. Um, but, you know, you, ultimately you want to focus on, on, on your sort of your senior terms. And your senior terms are your product types. And that is what collections are for. They're there to rank for product types. Don't let your products rank for the product type because it's going to cause you all sorts of headaches as your business grows and it scales. And you can end up having collections that never get found because you've got what's called cannibalizing pages. Okay, so um, people often ask me, well, how many keywords should I use per page? Or you know, how often do I use a keyword? And, and ultimately, is I try to have a focus of I only use one keyword, one, well, you should only have one keyword, one page, and I'll say one keyword, sorry, that's that's probably said that wrong. Essentially, you want to have, um, for every major keyword there is in your industry, that has one page, has one page, one core page that you offer first always, get everyone to go through that page, that's your page, that's the one that's got the most links internally from other pages, and you know whatsoever, you wouldn't be using that keyword on other pages, and if you did use it on another page, make sure you wrap it with a link and you send them back to that page, so when Google does crawl another page and goes, oh, washing powder's here. Oh, there's a link back to the washing powder. So you're essentially saying, I know I've used washing powder here, but what I'm doing is I'm linking you back to that collection because that page over there is the senior page. If you don't do that, you can end up with keyword cannibalization. It's a big problem we see when people don't plan out their blog strategy and they just write loads of content. They end up cannibalizing all different pages and they can really hold themselves back. So remember, when you add a product and you put the product type in there, you're gonna be focusing on a collection with that word, okay? And I'm gonna show you now how to add breadcrumbs because it doesn't have it out of the box with debut. It's a very easy thing to do, really simple. You don't require any real coding skills. You just gotta follow a few steps. You're gonna see that. And then making sure that you always you know, use the same consistent product type in the insert for that particular product um, from how you space the words out, how you capitalize the first letter. Keep it you know, explicitly consistent every single time and what you'll do is you'll create a breadcrumb structure. So Acme washing powder will have a breadcrumb that will say home, washing powder, and then Acme.
and then your Acme 2 washing powder will have also breadcrumbs. Home washing powder, Acme 2. And so it means all of these products all have a link with the word washing powder on them. So it's a nice relevant page, it's all about washing, you know, it's a washing powder product, so it's a good bit of relevance. And so when you send a link back to the collection with that word washing powder, from this relevant page it means when google does crawl the site and it goes down through the collection of washing powder finds these products ends up linking back up again with that word washing powder that anchor text we call it you know anchor text is a word anchored down with a link it shows that okay there are different washing powders but this one washing powder collection has got dozens or you know tens of internal links anchored down with the keyword washing powder therefore that must be the most important page for that now why is that important? Well, again, it means it's easy for Google to understand what is your core page for a term. Therefore, it's easier for Google to have confidence that that is a, that is a good page potentially to serve up to a consumer. At the end of the day, they are an advertising platform and they want to give the very best results to consumers to make sure people keep using Google search engine, therefore keep absorbing their adverts and keep making their money and their shareholders money. So doing something like this can potentially fix any future keyword cannibalization issues, but also having lots of them products all internally linking back up to the collection with the correct word could potentially help your SEO as well. Every page has got some element of SEO value. You know, some companies more than others, but you've all got some. And by pulling the resources of all your products with good, correct breadcrumbs, not only are you giving better user experience because it's easier to go back to the top level category, um, you're also making it very clear to Google what is the page you value the most for that, which means you've got clear hierarchy, good structure, and those things are really good ranking signals too. Um, and Quick advert, if you do find I'm talking too fast and you just want someone to do it for you, in the description you've got a link to my Fiverr profile, loads of five stars, check me out, the SEO fairy. Working at the moment, it's a client of mine, uh, electric cars. Uh, so if you're in Australia, in Canberra, you need an electric vehicle. So we're just working on trying to uh, sort, of sort the site out a little bit. Uh, it's pretty new and they need a bit of help. So that's what I'm doing for them. Um, so don't judge me on the site. Let's go and pick a product. Okay, so let's go to uh, e-scooters. So they sell scooters, all right. Don't worry, this isn't my choice. I wouldn't do that, all right, that's ridiculous. Um, and so let's pick a product. So this is e-scooters, okay. So one of the common things have is people create, they had another collection called all e-scooters as well as this, which is just completely pointless. Renders it, you know, absolutely uh, a nightmare for, for SEO. Um, but all of a lot of these things here, for example, they've got hoverboard, hoverboard, uh, quite a few other things we've been going through a few of them but you know these are these are these are products so these need to be ranking for the products not the product type okay so that's one of the things I said so let's just click on this particular product it's a scooter right um, and as you can see there um, you know probably mentions e-scooter in here somewhere does it mention that it's electric scooter okay so we don't want Google to think this is the um, this is you know the page for electric scooter or any other ones and so we need to make sure that these pages uh, link to one master, you know, master collection. Otherwise, what's the point of having a, you know, which, well, what's the point? Uh, what's the point of having an SEO strategy if you, if you don't do these sorts of things? So um, but there you go. So that's an electric scooter. There's another one here, Mantis Solo. Um, and he has gone through and got rid of the word electric scooter that was in e-scooter carbo was in all of them um, and I probably wouldn't I mean this is a brand and that for another video I might query that as well of how to word how to name product titles to make sure they don't cannibalize but uh, kind of cool these things aren't they uh, rode these in LA uh, the little limes uh, scooter they're called bird in the UK um, but let's have a quick here does it say electric scooter this doesn't really have much text to be honest but we've got all these scooters and we could use them to drive um, one central point. So you can see up top here, there's nothing here. There's no links to any other collections. And people have got to remember as well, your homepage isn't always the homepage. So uh, people often say, what's the point of breadcrumbs? And I say, it's good for navigation. And they go, well, yeah, but they just go back. Well, not if they've landed on your product. If you happen to rank for a product, um, back button would be Google, you know, or Bing or whatever, or Safari. So to make it eat and they go, oh, yeah, we've got it in the menu. Yeah, you know your menu, but they may not know your menu and they may not know, you know, necessarily you know, where to find it or what the words are. So make it easy, group them in a category uh, and a collection by product type. So what I've done already is I've gone through all these scooters and I've already named them all electric, you know, electric scooter or e-scooter. Um, actually, I've already named them, sorry, e-scooter. So they've all got product type of e-scooter. We can't see it, so let's add some breadcrumbs. So it's really simple. We go into the back end. So how did I get here? Let's start from here. We go to online store, and we go to actions. 
and we go to edit code. So that's online store, themes, actions, edit code. Okay, don't be scared, it's not hard, it's not scary, you can't really mess anything up. Well, you can, but you know, try not to. Um, and let's just shut down these. And so let's just find these from again. So there's two things we need to do. First of all, we need to add what's called CSS. That stands for cascading style sheets, but it's just a little bit of code. I'm going to show you, I've already pre done it, so I'm going to show you what it is. And CSS essentially is the, the look, the styles. That's all it is. It's the look and style. So there's different types of code you use when you build a Shopify website. And I don't expect you to build a Shopify website. Um, but just to make it uh, sort of clear, you've got JavaScript, which is you know action. So when you when you go to a website and you hover over this button here, and the, it changes a slight tint, doesn't it? Uh, I'm trying to find something that does it. Okay, the, you know, the, when you hover over a link here, it does that. There's, that's a, a sort of a, a, an action. That's JavaScript code that makes it do that. You know, so it's it, there's a bit of coding in the, called JavaScript that essentially says, you know, if this, then that kind of thing. That's kind of what JavaScript is. It's not exactly that. And some, you know, um, staunch advocates of JavaScript pro probably say I'm uh, butchering an explanation. But for you and me, for simple people, um, JavaScript code does stuff. You know, um, you know, as in actions. Uh, dynamic, I think is probably the word. Um, you know, that's JavaScript involved in making that, you know, move around. Um, making this text, this font, that's style sheets. That's a sheet of style. It's a blueprint of style, as it were. So it's a, it's a, it's a mapped out plan of, you know, all the text in this particular area will always be this font, this size, this color. You know, that's the blueprint of how things should look, okay? Whereas HTML is kind of like the, uh, the framework, uh, you know, yeah, essentially the framework of the building, you know. So there's going to be some, there's going to be a block of uh, HTML code over. There's going to be an HTML block within this HTML block that's going to be designed by CSS and it's going to be made dynamic by JavaScript. It's kind of the best way of describing it. But anyway, so we need to we need to set some CSS because if we're going to create some breadcrumbs. It needs to know what it's going to look like. Okay, so the breadcrumb um, CSS really small. And how do we get to that? Where do we do that? Well, everyone's going to be slightly different, but you're going to find it in your assets section. Okay, assets is where they are. And for most people, it's theme.css or theme.scss. SCSS and CSS is just two two ways of doing the same thing. One's just a served up minified, basically served up smaller. Um, but it's not going to be gift card CSS. It's going to be the theme, you know, generally for most people. So you'll see it as theme.scss.liquid or theme.css or theme.css.liquid. You know, you'll see different things like that. But this is the one, okay? So we're going to click that. And we don't have to find a spot in it. The beautiful thing about CSS, you just go straight to the bottom. You just add new CSS to the bottom, you know. Unless you're editing an existing piece, but it doesn't have breadcrumbs. And so we start here. So the, it's already ended. That's a closed funny bracket. Like, oh, I don't know the name for it. And we just do it here. Now, it is actually breadcrumb, but I can't remember the exact, um, let's just see, I've got a pre-made done here, breadcrumb, there we go, so it's here. Okay, let's go here. So let me just rewrite that, let's get rid of that. Okay, so dot breadcrumb, okay, so that's essentially what it's gonna be, that's the label of it. And we put in these brackets here, margin left, 45 pixel, that's it. We're just saying, you know, and you can change that. Could be 35 pixel. 25 pixel doesn't really matter um, let's do 20 pixels okay so you can even do the color you can do whatever you want you know you can um, it doesn't really matter there's not much you need to do it's just that so all that means is uh, 20 pixels in from the left margin of the page is where the breadcrumb is going to be and that is all okay this is going to follow the styles of the, of, of the site otherwise okay so we we'll save that so that's the first thing. So now it knows where to be, okay? Um, that's the only really thing it needs. Um, and we can change that up a little bit. Anyway, and so next up, we need to pick the template um, where it's gonna be. Now, it's actually, it's not a, it's called a template for, for some people, particularly with debut theme. There's a, there's a page called product hyphen template, but it's not actually the template, which is crazy. The template is product, but it's the section. So, um, the, the pages on, on Shopify are made up into lots of different sections. So you have a template, which is the, you know, the, the land, and sections are the houses within that land. And then within those sections, you'll have snippets, which might be you know, the room that does something, you know, that kind of thing. So it's horses of courses. But I want you to go to sections, and I want you to find product template here, okay? And now, under here, underneath the first div block, so you'll see div, and then you'll see 
enable Ajax, Ajax to do with the um, sort of the general rules of the site, but just this here. So it's, it's the first thing underneath here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to explain to you what this uh, code means. So grab this. This is the code. Um, back to Shopify. I'm just going to place it underneath. Doesn't matter if it's here. Doesn't matter if it's here. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's here. Okay, it doesn't matter. Um, I try to get rid of unnecessary white space though. Um, okay, the BR means there's a break. It means there's a bit of a gap between the pixels, between the breadcrumbs and the picture. That's all the BR means. Okay. So what does this mean? So this is a navigation-based label um, home, um, and the class is breadcrumb. Obviously, it's. Uh, linked to the other one uh, in the older uh, in the CSS file um, and you've got um, just essentially what it, what it does so that's the, the home breadcrumb and then you've got um, the class breadcrumbs this href means it's a link to the root URL so the home page so I could get rid of this and I could just put you know a little forward slash like this It'd be home page I could even type the home address in there it doesn't need to but that's just this code just means it roots dot root underscore URL um, is the href that's why it's in the uh, speech marks now title means it's a bit of, it's a bit of text that when you hover over it you'll see a box pop up it's just information to explain what that link would do and it's a helpful way of adding a bit more SEO value I suppose to behind that link so we've got their brand as the uh, as the first bit you know eye on DNA um, but we want to say you know, we didn't want to write EVs for sale in Canberra as the first breadcrumb so some people have home I don't want home I want the brand okay and then when you hover over that to explain what that link is, it's EVs for sale in Canberra, EV dealership. And then over here at the end of the thing, we just put the little, uh, whatever shape you want to have. You can have a hyphen, you can have a that, you can have an at sign, you can do whatever you like, okay? It's just a bit of text. And then the next one, and the next one would be again a breadcrumb. This one is collections, but now we're done is we put product type handleize. So that means is however the product type is written becomes uh, the link text after the forward slash of collections so it's very important that the product type um, you have a collection that has the same structure as a product type and I'll explain that in a second here we're pulling up the product type again just to show what text it should be this just means put text here it looks really fancy um, obviously because different products have different product types and this is the product template for all the products um, it will pull up the product type of that product page uh, and it will be a link Handleized, and I'll explain what handleized means in a minute. Again, that sign here, and then here is the last one: product title. Um, that's it, really. Um, so that's that's how you add breadcrumbs. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there. If you want to, I can make that smaller. I can't. Um, so it's span class breadcrumb. That's double underscore link. That's it, really. Um, save that, and we're going to go to um, save that one as well. So now let's uh, refresh the page. Okay, here you go. So we've got brand, hovered over it, EVs for sale in Canberra, uh, e-scooters is a link to the scooter section. Now look on the bottom left, you'll see e hyphen scooters after the forward slash of collections. That means they've handleized the, the phrase. So, bear, so this product here, let's go into the back end. I'm gonna show you what I mean by being very, very careful with how you, uh, how you set up the product types. Okay, so let's go to let's find an e-scooter here you go e space scooter is the same as e hyphen scooter for a url okay and when i say url i mean the slug and the slug is the bit after the collections so where you've got here um, let's go to let's click on it okay so right this bit here is the slug it's called the slug it's the slug bit it's the trail bit after after what you know what the type of page template is so it's a collection and the slug for it is e hyphen scooters and obviously you can't put space, you can't put a space, you, know, you couldn't do e-scooters cheap, you couldn't make a collection that had a URL like that because that's just me searching for the word cheap on that side, you know, so there has to be a hyphen there. And so Shopify knows space is the same as hyphen, so I could call the product type of the scooters, I could call them e-hyphen scooters or e-space scooters, it would get me the same result, but it shouldn't be anything else. I couldn't call it electric scooters, and think that was going to create because what that would then do is that would then create a collection that doesn't exist so here's a really good example okay I don't think they've got a collection for 
Um, okay, here's a right great example. So let's knee space ampersand space elbow space pads, right? There is no collection for this. So this is what happens when you don't do it right. And knee pads, knee and elbow pads. This is standard what I see on most people's Shopify sites. The product types are all over the shop. Very important to be consistent, and it also helps you to populate collections well. So they should really have a collection called collections, you know, and the slug would be knee hyphen pads or knee hyphen pad, and uh, the product type would be knee pads. So let's have a look. Let's, let's, let's have a look at this now. So um, let's find let's fast forward rookie. Okay, so there you go. So it's correct now. We've clicked on the thing. It works. Um, these are hoverboards. I think they've got different. Yeah. So we've made a collection for them. Hoverboards. Very easy because it's just one word. Collections, hoverboards, okay? I think there's a collection for it. Yep, there is. Right, now let's have a look at where. Safety gear, okay? So really, the product types of these could all be safety gear, but they're all over the shop. And this is knee pad because that's the product type for this. Uh, and it thinks, obviously it creates a collection URL based on, on what the, it sees the product type as. But obviously we click on it and there's nothing there. Okay, so um, very important to be consistent. So that's wasted SEO, isn't it? Someone clicks on that, and the gunner page doesn't exist. Um, breadcrumbs are really, you go, the answer might be, well, don't do breadcrumbs. Well, no, breadcrumbs are really useful because if, for example, you landed on, um, you know, let's have a look. So let's, let's recreate the scenario. Right. Okay, so eGlide G30, right? Okay, let me search for it. Um, eGlide G30 Canberra. Australia. I'm hoping, trying to find, I don't know if they're ranking for it yet. Okay, so that's the scooter here, okay? So I land on this scooter here, maybe that was ranking top and I ranked for it. Um, and it's not even their damn <laughs> the website! What am I doing? Um, okay, so their first one here is, is, this, is this collection here, okay? So their collection ranks for eGlide, okay. Um, but you know, if, if I was on a product and I'd landed on the product for that eGlide G30 scooter, my back button would be Google. So we want to make it easy, don't we? So if they're on here, they can go, oh, more e-scooters, boom. Which means people can see more products. Now, obviously, obviously, we need to improve the look of this particular thing. We need to sort this oh, this description area out here. It's a mess. Um, and uh, there's another thing I as well putting text below the folds, good as well. Um, underneath, sorry, the products too, uh, as well as having text above the products. Um, but anyway, so bear that in mind. So having breadcrumbs um, really useful, but also making sure the product time matches. So let's have a look at another piece of wear. Uh, what was these ones, isn't it? Fast forward, there you go. Knee and elbow pads. Um, and so obviously here, um, Shopify's tried to handleize it, knee, elbow pads, but again, it's it's not a thing. So it's really important to be consistent with them. So, um, so that's well worth knowing. Um, now I could, it depends how many pads they've got. We could put it all under safety gear, couldn't we? Um, knee and elbow pads. Yeah, so that's why it's important to uh, to have, I'm trying to find safety gear. Safety gear, so we could probably call them all safety gear. Um, safety gear, I mean, it's not very good. It's not particularly, I mean, what is safety gear? This is a whole different conversation to be honest. Safety gear is such a broad, this is another product problem we have, people have with their websites, not thinking about the keywords for their collections. I mean, safety gear. Well, safety gear is so broad. Let's Google safety gear. I bet knee pads don't come up uh, in general. Well, they, it's, they are a form of it, but it could be anything. Safety gear, what does it mean? Goggles, yeah, we've I mean, got some knee pads, but these are ads. Safety clothing, safety gear store, workwear, lifting gear, rigging equipment. So you know, currently they're targeting the wrong keyword for their product. So it's very important to actually make sure Google's telling you, you know, you've got the right word. Uh, even if it's you, even if you're not ranking, just thinking about these things. So I probably wouldn't call their product type safety gear. Why? Because it doesn't really matter. Uh, maybe it's scooter safety gear. It could be scooter safety gear or skate safety gear. And then perhaps, yeah, okay. So, and that's something we can check. Skate safety gear. Skate protection, protective gears, safety gear. Skating protection, skate protection. Okay, so clearly skate protection is probably the word. So we typed in skate safety gear, but Google favors protection. So we might change that to skate protection. Um, even if they go, even if it's, even if, I mean, I'm, and I'll speak to the owner and he'll say, yeah, but we don't do really skateboards. We do more like e-scooters. That's great, but you're not gonna rank for it 
um, because it doesn't exist. You know, Google thinks it's skate protection, so you probably want to call it skate protection, even just to get those people in. Because can skateboarders not use these? Um, I've never really seen many skateboarders with helmets on. Anyway, so that's just a whole different conversation. But getting the breadcrumbs is, is right, and so just making sure that you match. You've got a collection that matches the product type. That's it, really. That's how you add breadcrumbs. That's why you add breadcrumbs. And what it now means. Um, let's go back to the ride gear. All these scooters. So now all of these products um, that are scooters are linked to the scooter collection, and it makes it easier for for Google to understand that this is the core page. Why? Because this page has links to it from all of these products, um, whereas um, this product probably only has a link to it from this collection. So, uh, and because of the, and, and that's one of the things that John Muller, who's the head of search at Google, uh, stated recently to a question that someone asked him on a Friday hangout. They answer SEO questions. Um, how important is internal linking? And, uh, and the question was about flat hierarchy, which is what Google has. A flat hierarchy is where every collection all has the same structure. You know, on Shopify, you might have something like this. Um, I don't know, uh, skate gear, you know, whatever. You know, E-scooters. Yeah, you know, and so you have subcategories under it, or you know, or maybe you might have scooters. Um, but you don't get that that, that luxury on um, on um, in Shopify, little flat hierarchy. So he said one of the ways they can work out hierarchy is through numbers of internal links. And so because this collection now has more internal links than the other e-scooter products that mention e-scooters, um, it's pretty clear that this is the top level page. And of course, we're not, you know, we've removed these scooters from from the home page when they're on there randomly with home page stuffing. And we've made sure that there's no links to products in the menu. Uh, and it's just gone for collections. So that's that's how you add breadcrumbs. That's why you add breadcrumbs. And uh, that's the end of the video. If you like it, subscribe. I've got some more coming soon. Ta-ta.